I'm Ellie and welcome back to my van conversion series where I turn my 2007 Toyota Hiace into a camper van for traveling in and I'm up to the little finishing details such as adding some greenery to liven things up so I'm going to be making a vertical garden to go inside my van. I'm Ellie Wilder and you're watching Wilder in Motion. So the main part of my vertical garden is going to be made of these two metal troughs which I got from the reject shop. These will be attached to the wall and they're just the perfect size that I can fit two of these plastic pots inside each of them. So I'll have four plants in total and the reason I'm going to be planting into individual pots and then sitting them inside is so that I can use these drainage holes and that will run off into the main part of the trough and I'll easily be able to get each plant in and out if it needs a little more time in the sun or if one of them dies it's just a lot easier to move them around as individual pots. So to make up the four plants, I'm going to be using two that I have in my existing cacti and succulent collection and two that I have purchased. And the first one is going to be this plant right here. It's very hardy. I think these ones are really difficult to kill and they're happy to be in small spaces. I actually have another one here, which I think I've had this for seven years. Plant choice is really important if you want it to survive in the unusual conditions of a van. As you can see, this one here is dead and this is actually the second one of these I've had and they don't seem to survive very well regardless of what I do, so I definitely won't be getting one of those for the van. Another traditional spiky cactus option is a vertical one like the one that I have here, which although it's growing very well, it does tend to collapse under the weight of itself. You can see I've got these skewers holding up in place. So this isn't going to work in the van since it's going to be sitting at an angle like that. So having anything vertical, it's just going to fall over and possibly even fall out of the trough. Which brings me to my second plant choice, which is this one here, a jelly bean. These are great. I think these ones are impossible to kill. I started with a tiny little one about this size a couple of years ago, and now I have a 45 centimeter pot that's absolutely overflowing with these jelly bean plants. Now the really cool thing about these and how I grew this one is you only need one leaf and then it will start growing more leaves and roots out of it. So I've just taken a couple of cuttings off my bigger plant and this one already has a root coming off it there. So I'll just sit these on top of the soil and it will start to grow. And I'm going to start by using some sphagnum moss. This is great. It's used in pot plants and hanging plants and things like that because it's got great moisture retaining qualities. One thing to remember is this will compact over time as it gets moisture in it as well and the roots can still grow down into this area so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit extra. And then I've got some specialty cacti and succulents mix. I just have this because I have quite an extensive collection of cacti and succulents but regular potting mix would be just fine if you don't already have some of this. So these are my cuttings from my jelly bean plant. Now it would work from a single leaf, but since I have a bit extra, I decided to cut some more. And I can just sit that with the bottom facing down into the soil. And that will spring roots in the coming days. And that one is done. So now I'm transferring my other plant from its windowsill pot into this smaller one and then covering the roots with soil. That one's all done now too. So for the other two, I went out and purchased some succulents that would be short and compact and compatible for being in the small space in the van. So the first one I've got is this one and I was so glad that I could get one of these because I used to have one until it got attacked by a cockatoo so I've been trying to find a new one ever since. And then this one here is meant to be full sun so this one I will probably end up taking out of the troughs and moving into a more sunny position in the van every now and then. I think I'm just going to leave them in the pots they came in because they are the perfect size for the time being and see how they go. They do have some well draining soil in them. They don't have the moss at the bottom, but it should be okay. I'll see how they go in these existing pots and I'll change them if need be. So the next step was to pre-drill a couple of holes into the metal troughs using a metal drill bit. I decided to stagger the two troughs on the wall in this blank space I have next to my folding countertop. 
This area of the wall is perfect because it doesn't interfere with the use of the bench top, the storage area beneath it, and I won't be leaning back into this part of the wall either. I made some marks on the wall in the same spot as my pre-drilled holes and then pre-drilled through the MDF as well. Then I used a few screws to secure both of the troughs on the wall and once I made sure they were sturdy I was able to drop my pot plants easily into the troughs. And I finished things off with a couple of decorative stones on the soil. I've seen quite a few people incorporate wall art into their van build, so this is a little bit of a twist that is personal to me, especially considering two of these plants came from my windowsill at home, and it ties in with the nature theme that I've got going in my cushion covers. So I've just got a couple more finishing touches to go on the van, and then I will have my completed van tour coming to you very soon. I'll have a break next week for Christmas, so I wish you all a very happy holiday season, and then my first video coming back next year will be my complete van tour so if you don't want to miss that be sure to like subscribe and I'll see you next time